The Sigma FP is really quite a video focused camera. But could it also be a good camera for taking photos? Let's find out in this video. Kia ora, good morning everyone, Richard Wong here, welcome back to the channel. Today we are looking at the Sigma FP, it's Sigma's first full frame camera after they joined the Elman Alliance. I originally scheduled this review to come out a couple of months ago and I have used this camera for a couple of weeks last year uh, but in the end just because I had so many reviews that I need to go through and I didn't really want to rush this review so I put it one side and recently I picked up the camera again and used it for a couple of weeks more and so today I want to do the video about this Sigma FP. I think most of us would agree that this Sigma FP is a very capable video camera. But is it also a capable photo camera? Let's talk about it in this video. But instead of doing my typical format that I go through all the different features and do some analysis on some of the features, I want to do it slightly different. And what I want to do is I want to share with you five things I like the most about this Sigma FP when I use it as a photo camera. And also five of the things that I don't like the most about this Sigma FP when I use it to take photos. So let's start with the first thing that I really like first and I think this is a very obvious one is definitely the size of this camera. This is a very very small very compact camera especially remember this is a full frame camera. I have always been wondering why Back in the days with the film camera, all those film cameras can be made so small, so compact. While these days all the full frame camera, no matter it's a DSLR or mirrorless camera, they are all so much bigger than uh, the film camera that we had 20, 30 years ago. I understand that there are a lot more technology in our digital camera. We have the LCD screen, we have an electronic viewfinder, we have a much bigger battery and a lot of other electronic stuff that is inside the camera. But I thought with the technology that we have these days, we should really be able to make some really compact full frame camera, which is finally here with this Sigma FP. I mean, compare the size of this with, say, um, my Nikon Z6, which is already one of the smaller full frame mirrors camera. But if you put them side by side, you can see that the Sigma FP is definitely quite a lot smaller than the Nikon Z6. And another good thing is the kit lens that come with the Sigma FP. It's a very compact lens as well with very good picture quality. So together it makes it a very small package that you can easily fit into any small camera bag. It's not really pocketable because of the size of the lens. It's still quite a bit thicker than um, something that you can put into the pocket. But compared it to any other full frame mirrors camera in the market, this is definitely a lot smaller. Unfortunately, because of its really compact size, the camera actually doesn't have any grip at all. Look at it, it's pretty much a um, rectangular box like this. So the ergonomic, the handling, the grip of this camera is really not that good. I don't feel comfortable at all if you want me to just hold it with one hand and take photo. If I just need to hold it with one hand, it is okay. But when I want to start taking photos and press the shutter button, I don't really feel comfortable at all. I feel like I'm going to drop the camera any second. Sigma has created two optional grip for this camera. Unfortunately, I haven't got a chance to try any of them, but I can only imagine with the grip, it would just greatly improve the handling of this camera. So yeah, this is definitely one of the downside being such an ultra compact camera. The second thing that I really like about this Sigma FP is that Pretty much all the mid to high end camera that you can buy these days, there are lots of buttons, lots of dial on the body. When you pick it up, unless you are already very familiar with that brand, it will take you a bit of time to um, just figure out, remember, understand where the buttons are, what they do, and all those dial, how to configure it. 
And a big contrast with this Sigma FP is that there are very limited number of buttons that on the whole body. You can see at the top, there is only um, the record button and the trigger button and then you only have the two switch. One is the power switch and one is the switch between cine mode and the photo mode. And then at the back, there are only a handful of buttons and most of the buttons are at the bottom and those are the one that you usually don't need to press when you are taking photos or video they are more like just changing the for example the color profile or the display settings so those are the things that you leave it there you may touch it once in a while but normally when you are taking photos you only be touching the uh, buttons on this size and this dial here so overall the design is very simplistic and it kind of remind me of um, Leica cameras for example if I put the Leica Q side by side you can see that they are all quite similar in terms of number of buttons and dials it has and they all have a pretty simplistic design not too many buttons or dials on the whole camera and in fact actually the size of these two cameras are quite similar they are both full frame camera this one is a fixed lens camera and this is a interchangeable lens camera and actually the Leica Q is actually a little bit bigger than the Sigma FP so you can see how small the Sigma FP actually is oh and there's one interesting thing is uh, if you take the battery from the Sigma FP you can put it into the Leica Q and use it or vice versa because the battery from these two cameras are interchangeable and another interesting thing is when I'm holding these two bodies side by side, I actually feel the Sigma FP has a better build quality and feel more solid than the Leica Q, which is pretty impressive because the Leica Q's build quality is already excellent. The second thing I don't really like about the Sigma FP is it doesn't have a electronic viewfinder and it also doesn't have a tiltable or flippable screen so um, we only have a fixed screen on the camera normally if one of those things missing I probably wouldn't complain at all especially the size of this camera is so small but without an EVF and also have a fixed LCD screen, it does make it quite tricky when I want to take photo in a more tricky shooting angle, when I want to take some photo from a really low angle or high angle. It is a bit hard to see and frame the photo precisely. I would love to have at least an optional electronic viewfinder available for this Sigma FP. I know Sigma has created an optional LCD viewfinder that you can attach to the LCD screen but i feel that viewfinder is mainly created for filmmaker and also that does make the size of this camera a lot bigger once you attach to it so i don't feel that is a very good solution for photographers the first thing i really like about this sigma fp is this full frame image sensor sigma usually they use their foveon sensor which is fantastic the color, the sharpness from the Volvion sensor is absolutely fantastic. However, the biggest weakness for the Volvion sensor is that its high ISO performance is really not so good. Uh, a lot of time when you bump up the ISO to ISO 800 or so, the image quality is already pretty bad. But this time they put a more traditional sensor in this Sigma FP and the high ISO image performance is excellent. At ISO 12800, I think the image quality is still very good and if I increase to 25600, you start to see a bit of noise and the image quality degree a little bit but it's still very good and even at ISO 51200, the image quality is still not too bad. At the maximum ISO 102000, you definitely start to see a lot of noise and the image quality definitely drop quite a bit but if you ask me, I feel Sigma can probably push another stop or at least another half a stop and still can create some usable output. I did another test to see how the raw file would respond if I underexpose the original photo and then try to push it um, during the post processing and surprisingly I found even if I underexpose the original photo by six stops 
which is something you normally wouldn't do at all and I push it by 6 stops in post processing the result is actually still very usable even when I look at the shadow area the amount of noise, the um, color shift, color cast is still very minimal so that is very surprising I definitely didn't expect the raw file of this camera can be so good and so clean the Sigma FP's fastest shutter speed is 1 over 8,000 seconds, which is excellent, which is the same as most of the professional camera in the market right now. But the problem is it doesn't have a mechanical shutter, it only has the electronic shutter, which does create a few problems, depends on what sort of photo you take. The first problem, the biggest problem is that if you are panning your camera, then you would have the rolling shutter effect. You will see the straight line become a diagonal line in your photo. This is not a problem if you are just taking landscape photo or most of the everyday photo. But if you want to use this camera to take some action photo that involve panning the camera, then this is probably not the best camera to do that kind of photos. And another limitation that is caused by the electronic shutter is that its fastest flash sync speed is only 1 30th second. And it would even drop to 1 15 second if you are taking 14 bit raw photos. So that makes this Sigma FP not really the best camera if you want to take some photo using camera flash or strobes. And another thing is that the camera itself actually doesn't have any hot shoe mount on it. So if you want to attach your camera flash, you can still do that because um, it does come with a bracket or connector thingy with the camera. So you do have to um, remove one of the flip here and then you can attach it onto the camera. Then you can attach a camera flash onto the camera. But it's definitely not the most convenient solution if you want to quickly put on a camera flash and take a photo with this Sigma FP. I have just talked about how good the high ISO performance this Sigma FP has and now I want to talk about another thing which is the opposite sign. Something surprisingly I don't find too many people talk about it that is the composite low ISO that is available on this camera. You can go all the way down to ISO 6 yet you hit it right it's ISO 6. So the camera sensor actually cannot go down to ISO 6. What Sigma did is they applied some computational photography tricks and when you set the ISO to anything below ISO 100 and what they actually do is they would take multiple photos instead of one single photo but then they will try to composite those photos together and that will emulate the low ISO setting. You could have it output as either JPEG or RAW or JPEG and RAW I found this feature actually very useful, especially if you like taking landscape photos because what it means is ISO 6 compared to the normal base ISO, ISO 100, there is a 4 stop difference. That means it allows you to take the photo with 4 times slower shutter speed compared to um, just at the base ISO. So for example, if you are taking photo during bright sunny day, normally even if you are taking photo at the minimum aperture, the shutter speed is still too fast so you cannot freeze the water movement at all. But if you switch to ISO 6, then now you can smooth out the water movement a little bit. Here is a set of example photos. The first photo I shot at ISO 100 and the minimum aperture which is f22. And the second photo, the aperture is still the same at f22. But I changed the ISO to ISO 6. Now you see the photo shot at ISO 6 definitely have a bit more of that dreamy look because of the slow shutter speed. You can see why this could be a very handy feature for people who like to take landscape photos because sometimes you may forgot your ND filter at home and you suddenly want to take some slower shutter speed photo then you can just switch to ISO 6 and another thing is even if you have an ND filter you may have a couple of different lens with a different filter thread that means you have to carry ND filter with a different size or different step up step down ring but with this ISO 6 settings it means no matter what lens you use you can still get a 4 stop slower shutter speed just by turning it to ISO 6 
Another feature that is missing from the camera is the in-body image stabilizer or the IBIS. To be honest, because of the sensor's very good high ISO performance, most of the time I could just bump up the ISO a little bit and still get some decent output photos. But it would be really nice if I can do some handheld photo with the slow shutter speed using the ISO 6 setting if I have the IBIS. The fifth thing I really like about the Sigma FP is that it is using the L1. All the previous camera from Sigma that has interchangeable design, they all using the Sigma SA mount, which to be honest, not only that the lens selection is a little bit limited because only Sigma would make SA mount lenses. It's also very hard if you want to buy a SA mount lens if you walk into a camera store um, the chance are, I think 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10 shops would not carry any SA mount lens in the camera shop. So now this time they switch to the L mount and with the three company like uh, Sigma, Panasonic all making L mount lens, all of a sudden you have a much bigger lens selection that you can choose and also I imagine there will be a lot other third-party lens manufacturer who are starting to make Elman lenses for example the lower line mill lens that um, actually I have reviewed but I can't really show you that anything yet that is also available in the Elman so um, yeah subscribe and um, you probably can see that lens review very soon but I can't show you anything that yet um, that also available in the Elman and there are also other manufacturers that's also making Elman lenses so the lens selection is a lot bigger now I know that most of the Elman lenses right now they are very big so when you mount it onto the Sigma FP it looks really unbalanced but I do really expect that there will be more um, more compact lenses for the Elman camera that we will see in the market in the near future. For example, Panasonic has just announced the updated uh, Elman lens roadmap. It looks like there are some more compact lenses that will be coming from Panasonic in the near future as well. But no matter what, using the Elman definitely make this Sigma FP a lot more attractive compared to the older days when they were using the SA mount. Okay, the last thing that I want to say I don't really like about the Sigma FP is its autofocus system. The autofocus performance is okay, I guess, overall, especially when you're taking photos. I think most of the time, the autofocus speed and accuracy is okay. It's definitely not the fastest or the most accurate, but under a lot of situations, it's actually not too bad. But the problem is from time to time, the autofocus system would just suddenly not behaving very well. There were a couple of situations that I was taking photo of uh, just trying to autofocus on some object, which I thought is pretty easy to uh, lock on because it has good contrast. But for some reason, the camera just refused to uh, see or lock on to the target. I have to try many times. Then finally, it can lock onto the target. So yeah, when you are taking photos, its autofocus performance is definitely not as good as uh, most of its competitors in the market right now. And also when you switch to continuous autofocus mode, I think it works and um, quite a lot of time it works quite okay, but its speed and accuracy is definitely a little bit lower than the other camera in the market. These are the five things that I like the most and I don't like the most about this Sigma FP. To be honest, the things that I don't like the most are mostly due to its compact size. If Sigma make the camera a little bit bigger, I'm sure they can put a much better grip on it. Then there will be space to put the uh, IBIS. They can probably either fit an uh, electronic viewfinder or make the screen movable instead of a fixed screen and they certainly can put a mechanical shutter into the body as well. So most of these limitations are really because of its very compact body size. This Sigma FP, even though I complain the autofocus performance is not exactly as good as uh, some other camera in the market, but at least overall performance is more or less very similar to the other camera in the market. It may not be the best, 
but it is similar but if you have used any of the previous sigma camera you will find this is definitely not the case the autofocus sometimes is completely not usable the battery life is horrible the camera will overheat not maybe not overheat but like heat up very quickly even when you are just taking photos all these problems are not on this sigma fp anymore so if you compare it to what it used to be there is already a huge improvement but what the most important thing is the sigma fp shows us that sigma is still following its own path when they are designing their own camera it is definitely not a panasonic s1 chrome or it's not trying to copy a sony a7 III. Sigma is still designing and creating camera that is very unique in the market. No one else is creating such a compact and yet still very solid camera that can handle both photo and video. And that is what I like the most about Sigma cameras.